Welcome back to Falling Fox Gaming, everybody. I am your host, Blaine, and today we're going to be playing some more Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. When we left off, we had taken a look at a couple of thieves to see if any of them would qualify as a good first thief for us in the future. Now, between Apocritea, Rote, I think it's how it's pronounced, and Legata, we liked Legata by far the most. And there's a lot of advantages and disadvantages to that thief specifically, but we'll talk about that in the future. Right now, I mostly want to talk about our campaign and where we're currently at. So, as of right now, our training is going quite well. You can see our stats are going up fast enough. I would like them to be going up a little bit faster, but I'm happy where we're at. And our companions and our family members are doing okay as well. Now, they would be going up a lot faster if we could find some better fights, but unfortunately we have not. And that's one of the things I want to address today. One of our main goals for today is to go out and find some of these bigger fights and more equal fights that we can get into so that way we can actually train up our characters. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to go and fight some Azurai. The problem is, is we are pretty far up north and we have to head south to go actually try and hunt them down. With Sturgia expanding, pretty much all their vassals are going to be down there. And if we look here, we are at war and have been at war for over 40 days. At some point in the near future, a peace is going to be called. I can almost guarantee it. And I have a feeling that the Sturgians have kind of expanded their forces as far as they can. And I don't think they're going to be able to take another town before a peace is called. And so I think our goal for today is going to be to head south and try and get into any fight that we pretty much can, so long as we're not going to be outright defeated. The other thing I've been thinking about is that we don't necessarily have to stay with Sturgia. If they end up calling a peace, we'll probably jump away from Sturgia and join up another faction as a mercenary to keep our combat going. We really need to get into some fights to actually level up our individual combat skills, and we have enough backbone troops like the legionaries and palatine guards that we can send our companions in and try and fight, and if they lose, it's okay because we have a more powerful force waiting to help out and finish off the fight. So let's head south and see if we can find some trouble to get into. Okay, so maybe I'm wrong. It looks like the Sturgians are actually sieging Koyez and are going to try and take it before a peace is declared with the Azurai. I was not expecting that. Well, seeing as the Sturgians are already sieging, maybe I'll hang on this general region and take a look around and see if I can find some smaller parties to fight. Otherwise, I'll join the big siege once it actually gets going. And it looks like I was right after all. The Azurai and the Sturgians had a peace declared in the middle of the siege. And I fully agree with it, actually. The Sturgians were very stupid here. They actually started the fight before they completely depleted the garrison by starving them out. And they actually were fighting with several catapults and ballistas still up on the walls, which means their army was going to get obliterated. So overall, a good call for the Sturgians to declare peace. But my point was proven. There was no way they were going to take another fief before a peace was declared. And that leaves us in an interesting predicament. We need to find something to do now. Okay, here's an interesting development. The Vlandian started sieging Koyez now, and that gives me an idea. So the Sturgians have kind of hit a wall here. I don't think they're going to go to war anytime soon. They're getting money from pretty much every faction, so I think it's time to jump ship from the Sturgians and join a different faction. Now, based on what we're seeing here, I'm thinking maybe we just join up with the Vlandians and keep fighting the Azrai. That's been going well for us so far, so I think maybe we'll just continue doing that. Not to mention the Azrai aren't doing very good on this side of the continent, so if we can keep pressure on them, it'll actually probably help us in the future by keeping them pushed back, or at least weakening this side of their territory. Okay, we can't join with the army, but I did find a lord here that is going to allow us to join, so we're going to go ahead and join as a mercenary with the Vlandians. Okay, after failing to catch several smaller parties, I've decided to dump some of our troops off. We are getting rid of 22 troops and keeping pretty much just our core group that's going to allow us to be an effective fighting unit. Now, this is the kind of group that I was talking about originally, and I think we're pretty much set to go to fight some of the basic smaller lords. We'll still have to avoid the bigger parties, but with us being this fast, we should have no problem avoiding any armies or any of the bigger lords. These guys are still faster than me somehow. They literally sped up even though they were just the same speed. Uh, <laughs> Arwa. Who's Arwa? You know, something I hadn't actually considered. I could potentially join the Azurai. Uh, let's go see how this plays out. I want to see how this plays out. The Azurai, where are they going? They're traveling to besiege a castle. Man, the AI in this game are just bonkers. Okay, so this is interesting. They're not actually attacking. And I'm curious as to why. Now they are. Now, do we go in and help? Oh, I now I remember who this is. Arwa was one of the lords that I saw as part of a different group. I actually wanted to try and get her on my team. Interesting. Well, okay, hold on. 
Let's back up. I'm getting way ahead of myself. We're in a lot of trouble right now. If you notice this little bar right here where it says power levels and that tiny little red splotch, yeah, that's us. And that's me right there. That's my party. And, and, and that's their parties. And if you'll notice, my party is smaller than each of their individual ones. I may have been trying to creep a little bit closer to see what was going on and accidentally clicked on their army and then, well, they clicked on me and, well, here we are. So I can only imagine that this fight is not going to go well, but <laughs> we're, we're going to do it, I suppose. All right, so I was going to try and escape, but it said that we'd pretty much lose all of our troops and stuff anyway, so I figured we'd at least fight for the fun of it. And honestly, this would be a great battle map if we were on the other side. Now, unfortunately, they gave them the easy to defend side and we are stuck in the open field against what several hundred cavalry. <laughs> oh, no. Um, looking around the battlefield, we have very little in the way to help us. How far does our starting zone go over? Looks like a ways over here, right here. So we can go all the way to over here. Their battle line extends the entire width of this. <laughs> ah, I'm losing my mind if you can't tell. Okay, so I have an idea. I'm not saying it's a good one, but it's an idea. So, <laughs> so here's my plan. These are going to be what's called the sacrificial cavalry. <laughs> um, these 10 troops are going to be the heroes that are, well, I mean, they're going to get slaughtered. I mean, th there's really no way around it. They're, those 10 guys right there are going to fight. So us, only 57. Us 57 are going to try and make a break for these cliffs over here. Now, we're not in the best shape to do that. And honestly, they're probably better than we are, but that's that's the plan. I know it's not a good plan, but that's the plan. We're essentially going to beeline for this cliffside over here, kind of where they're at, which is not the, not the greatest. This is going to go poorly. So we're going to have our cavalry and everybody else just kind of run to me and hope this works. Now, as you see, they have 87 cavalry. Come on, guys. Guys. Guys, you need to move. Guys, you move a lot faster. Like, a lot faster. Alright. Here's where we're going to make our stand. They're not going to make it, are they? <laughs> Guys. You need to move a lot faster. Okay, I need to try and distract them. Maybe I can help. And I'm noticing a lot of dead people right there. And I think that's our people. Well, this did not go well. Actually... This went exactly how I expected it to. No different. Ow! And, hey, I killed someone. Can I at least, like, hit the Lord? Oh, oh, that's a spear wall. Oh, my God. Ah! I'm alive. Oh, am I alive? Does this count as living? Does this just... Wait, hold on. Well, let's distract them. Oh, I think my people are over there getting slaughtered right now. I don't have a good weapon for this either, unfortunately. If I had, like, a really good pole arm, this could at least be, like, interesting. Right now, I have this crappy two-handed sword that I've had really bad luck with. Well, this is not great. Hold on, there's a banner guy. Oh! <laughs> oh, no! Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, hey, they made it to the cliff! Good job. Well, kind of. Okay, that's... I can't even tell where my people are. Like, I see our dots, but not really. Oh. Oh, there's a horse. There's another horse. Honestly. Okay, we're not doing good, obviously, for many, many reasons. But, like, I mean, we got 19 kills. That's impressive when they have 600 people on the battlefield and we have nine. <laughs> All right, who's left? Ah, uh, well, we lost the battle. Okay, let's just agree that that was still pretty impressive for how bad that was for us. Um, oh, that was really bad for us. Well, you know, you gotta have setbacks, I guess.
Uh, and everyone is captured. Everyone is captured, obviously. Yep. Um, now, I'm not going to lie. Oh, they're going to lose here, too. That's unfortunate. Wow, the Azrai just did one sweeping one. I may have joined the wrong team. You've been held for prisoner. Oh, yeah. Here we go. The attackers came in quite as you were thrown in a dungeon. I have never been put in a dungeon before. That is cool. I mean, okay, you know, it's obviously like a relative term here, but <laughs> never thought about that before. Okay, now I will admit a couple of things here. One, I have never been taken prisoner and been thrown into a dungeon. So this is actually a completely new experience to me. Two, this town is pretty well defended right now. <laughs> That's crazy. And I didn't even think about this. I think I could have just left the kingdom. And I might have even been able to do that before the fight. I hadn't noticed that and I kind of forgot about that. So that is a huge mistake on my part. If I could have done that. But you know what? Right now it is what it is. I guess we could leave the kingdom. I wonder how long we'll actually get held here. Now, they're probably... Oh, Oscar escaped. Oh, this is interesting. So people can actually escape. Can I see who's all here? Um, no, because the menu doesn't work properly. Oh, I kind of can. So there's me, Alistair. And no one... Well, some of the other lords from Vlandia. I'm going to try and bail and see if they let me. I cannot. That's cool. I like that they don't let you just bail to avoid prison time. Well, let's see how long we're going to be stuck here. Not really sure how, but Rosalina gained 24 skill points in charm. Okay, so it's been like five days, something like that. You spend long hours in the sunless dank of the dungeon. More than you can count. Uh, counted five. Suddenly, one of your captors enters the cell with an offer. He proposes to free you for a return of 1,537 dinars of your hidden wealth. Well, it's not cl It's clearly not hidden. <laughs> You decide to accept the offer or refuse him and wait for a better offer. Honestly, that's literally chump change. That's like a couple of weeks wages. So sure. Okay. Well, that puts a little bit of a weird spin on this too, because now I have zero troops and I am only 3.3 .3 speed and there's a bunch of bad people right there. So this isn't great. So there's a different issue too. I had a lot of stuff. Now I do not. I have three mules. I think I had close to a hundred horses. Being taken prisoner is serious. Yeah, we're gonna have to just accept it for what it is. So in all seriousness, we're gonna have to abandon the Vlandians right now. We don't have any reason to stay with them right now. We, well, technically, as I say, we tried to help them, but we didn't. We actually just got ourselves in a lot of trouble and we're gonna have to recall all of our people. Okay, and we told all of our people to come back to us, so hopefully they'll be joining us soon. Now, I think we're going to have to probably take a couple of random troops, which we can't do that because there are no troops. I guess there's some caravan guards we could probably gain. Uh, I don't really want to do that, though. All right, well, first things first, we need to make sure we are prepared to travel around a little bit. All right, so the best I could do is to not pick up any horses at all and actually just buy some food, a little bit of everything. That's kind of the best that we can get in terms of our speed. So we're going to stick with that. Now, I'm really tempted to actually buy or hire these um, caravan guards just because they'd be considered cavalry, so they'll move a little bit faster. But I think what we're going to do is we're just going to try and poke around and wait for our family members to join us. Now, it looks like the Vlandian army is still rolling around, so maybe they defeated the Azrai army. I don't know how. The Azrai army was a lot bigger, but you never know. Size isn't technically everything. Now, we're going to have a couple of days before our family joins us, and we're just going to kind of leave Azrai territory. Man, never go to Azrai territory. <laughs> that did not go well for us. We were down there for like two days. Uh, maybe what we'll do is we'll head into Ortizia and wait a couple days here for our family members to join us. Actually, wait, why am I waiting in Ortizia? Legate is right here. Let's go up here. All right, so we're going to wait here for everyone to join us. Oh, looks like pretty much everybody's joining us. Okay, so everybody's back in our party. And we're going to go ahead and do this tournament to try and make ourselves feel a little bit better. Now, what do we got here? A bow. I don't even remember the last time I got stuck with a bow in a tournament. Well, I'm just going to shoot this guy over here, I guess, and see if, if I can kill him. My team's not doing good, which is kind of what I'm expecting right now. Red team's doing good over there. Oh, well, maybe we can get him. Yeah, thank you, whoever did that. Okay. Uh, don't shoot me, please. 
Well, we at least made it to the next round either way. Ah! Uh, now, just to be clear, I am not playing on the 1.2 patch, so I do not have the update. And the reason why I say that is I've seen that combat has been kind of wonky for people. Ow! For people in that patch, so <laughs> hopefully that gets sorted out before I actually update to it. Did I do okay, I thought I, did I thought it said that I did two damage. I was like, that's a little low, even for me. Oh, I just tried to stab my own teammate. Oh no! That's a throwing weapon. Those hurt. Wait, do I have throwing weapons? No, I have a sword though. I do better with a sword over a pull arm. My teammates are not doing well, are they? Oh, Jesus. Okay, I don't know what's going on, but my team is not doing like, anything. Thank you, guys. Woo. So I just have to like come close to dying for my teammates to do anything. I'm going to die. That does not leave. Ah, yes. Okay. Okay. This is not going exactly well. Can I brace with this thing? No, I don't have the skill for it, I don't think. That worked. Now, there we go. Hey, we did it. Man, that was really close. I almost died. I'm not going to lie. I feel like if I would have gotten taken out there, I feel like we would have lost that whole thing. This has been a very interesting tournament so far, honestly. It's been a lot more entertaining than some of the ones I've done. Now... Goal here is to get him off guard, which I think I did. Yeah, okay. That worked out. Triari? I don't know who that is. Never heard of him before. All right, and our last round against an Imperial Crossbowman. This should be fairly easy to win. Because normally, yep, just like that. <laughs> okay, well, that was easy enough, and that makes me feel a little bit better about myself. <laughs> kind of, I'd say it lessens the sting from everything we lost, but it really doesn't, because those boots are only worth 900. Okay, so we were making some strides there, and now we found ourselves back to essentially square one. And I am not 100% sure which direction I want to go with this. You know what? This is a good time to take stock of everything we've done. We have had a pretty good run, so we haven't had any major setbacks until pretty much that event right there. This will give us a chance to kind of look at what we were originally talking about. Now, you guys voted for us to join Batania. We are right here by their territory. We have no real connections to anything right now. So let's just go ahead and recruit some of their troops. Okay, so that's some of their, what are these, the highborn youth? I think they're called, yeah. And then a volunteer. We're just going to pick up a few troops. Now, I don't know what their units are. So let's just pick up a little bit of everything. And we can see how we like them. So we're up to 20 units. Maybe, you know, what? that's enough. Let's take a look. So we have 20 units. We managed to get ourselves four highborn youth, three volunteers, and a clan warrior, which is essentially a tier two. So let's put him in there. Now, the other Batanian units, I'm not really sure what to do with. It looks like they're kind of skirmishers, so I guess we'll have to figure out how they work, because I don't actually know how to use any of their units. But that being said, I am not going to use any of their horsemen. I'm, I just refuse to believe that they're any good if I haven't actually heard of them. I've only ever seen them on the battlefield a few times, and I don't remember them at all. Which leads me to believe they cannot be very good at all. If I end up with a couple of them from like fighting or capturing them as prisoners or something, I'll take them. But in terms of leveling them up into that, I'm just not going to do it. I'll stick to Banner Knights and um, Cataphracts. Now we recruited a clan warrior, so we're going to definitely try this tree down here to get down to this like Oath Sworn at some point. And then with the Wood Runner, if we go to the right hand tree, we have either the Skirmisher line or the Falksman line. So the Wildlings have, yeah, they have Javelins, that's pretty good. That could be useful. Those are good Javelins too, those are the hooked ones. Those will do a ton of damage. So maybe the Wildlings are kind of like a, a, a semi-archer unit. Yeah, because they don't have an archer unit, do they? Oh, it's their, um, their noble units are archers. So yeah, well, so the noble line people will be the archers. And then we have like the skirmishers who are kind of archers. I guess we they have a shield, right? Yeah, I mean, they can be on the front line throwing stuff. That works. And then the Falksmen have a really good pull arm. That's actually, yeah, that's actually a pretty good pull arm. And then throwing weapons as well. So, okay, this is going to be an interesting line. And then I I really like this. I almost, I want to see what these guys are like on the battlefield. These guys have two-handed weapons. That's it. They have no shield, no nothing. Just two-handed weapons and a hundred skill in it. So, this could be a good unit, the Falksmen, without upgrading to the pull arm. Because I almost feel like the two-handed weapon might be better for combat. I don't know. 
we're going to find out. So yeah, we have a few units. I want to collect a couple more at some point here, but I see some looters here. Let's try and take them out. This feels like back to square one. Uh, this is so embarrassing. I am really sorry, guys. Now we have some people on horseback. I got to get them off horseback. Who is that? It's Oscar. Oh, and Xander, right? Yeah, because they're supposed to be our cavalry people. So they're the ones training to be cavalry. Who's that? Oh, and Veronette too, apparently. Oh, yeah. And Sylvian should technically be too. Where's Sylvian? Because Sylvian is going to be... Yeah, we need to get her on a horse probably too. Okay, well, I was going to have everyone charge. So let's just do that. Um, I'm going to let our companions and our people do the work here. Now, it's it's looters. It's five looters. There's, there's really nothing special here. They're probably going to die before they get to our line from the throwing weapons. Now, it is interesting everyone has throwing weapons. That is a really interesting concept for a unit. Yeah, skill points are going up fast. Throwing especially. Now, the thing is, our skills went up pretty rapidly there now some of their skills are very low hold on sorry i'm gonna back out of there so we don't have to listen to their screaming i i think this is just what we're gonna have to do for a while now i'm gonna try and get a few more units let's see what do we got in here um i don't want to go more than 25 so i guess that's gonna be it that's all 25 okay so we have 25 units now and let's see what we actually have so we have okay we have more more of these highborn youth i hope these guys are good I mean, I've heard they're good, but I don't know anything really about them. So this is going to be an interesting unit to try. Um, so we get archers right off the bat. So we have our front line and then our archers. And we need to get... So now here's the thing. Should I take Xander and Oscar off their mounts? That Oh, I could just put them as like their own like little cavalry group and let them just run around and do stuff. That might be a good idea. All right, so here's the situation we found ourselves in. I think we're going to have to run around and just fight groups of bandits and looters for a while. We sort of skipped it in the beginning. We did some fights, but we were actually traveling around with a pretty large group, so our companions and family members didn't really get involved in the fights too much. And that's my mistake. I kind of rushed the progress a little bit, and I think we need to take a step back and let our companions and family members get into the actual melee and ranged combat more. And part of the reason why I got a bunch of miscellaneous troops in the beginning is because our people didn't really have armor or weapons, and now they do. And obviously their stuff isn't great, but it's okay. It's good enough to get the job done against looters and bandits, and I feel comfortable fighting just about any group we'll probably see. So I'm thinking between episodes here, we're going to do a little bit off screen of fighting just the random parties. So there might be a little bit of a time skip because I'm just going to have to hunt them down. I'm not going to worry about a lot of the background stuff right now. Any of the big world events that are going on, like all the wars and stuff, really don't affect us at the moment. Right now we just need to work on ourselves, which is really important to do in the early game. And so I think we're going to call it for today. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.